I kind of think we've got to start with the field goal posts that are in the lake, right? I mean, as we are gathering here at 1130, I understand that Ohio State-Wisconsin just ended. We will get to that shortly. But no result brought more entertainment. No result delivered more on this college football Saturday, to me at least, than Kansas 38, number six Oklahoma 33. I just there, there's a lot of de- lightning delay, a lot of different ways to pull this apart. Bud, where where do you want to start um, with this in terms of the Jayhawks and this big win? So they they just really didn't look physically superior to Kansas like we had seen Texas look compared to Kansas like three or four weeks ago. I, I go back to our show on Thursday, right? I, and I said like, look, I I kind of want to bet Oklahoma here, but at the same time, like I don't know if they're quite as good as Texas, and they beat Texas, but like. Did, did Oklahoma look physically superior? Because Texas looked like a different class of athlete. Oklahoma did not. Yardage was, was pretty much even in this one. I thought Kansas just a, a tremendous job to continually find ways to put Jason Bean in a position to succeed. Mm. And Oklahoma, like, what, two tackles for loss all day? Maybe three? Mm-hmm. And what what they get? Like, they just – they didn't really dominate Oklahoma's offense – Kansas offensive line at all. And on the, on the other side, like the passing game for OU just wasn't amazing. I do think they missed Andre Anthony who's out for the year. So I was looking at it um, or very early in this. I, I made a note, you know, it's kind of all over the place. I had to live blog the, uh, the Oregon Utah game, which <laughs> yeah, so much for that being the game of the day. Um, it prop I, props to Kansas's defense, 11 drives into the game. Oklahoma only had 27 points to show for it. Excellent on third and fourth down. Excellent when they got into red zones. Like they came up with those fourth down stops. Kansas's defense on paper is a weakness that Oklahoma's offense was ready to exploit. And Tyree Walker back in the um, back in the lineup, he didn't play last time out for the Sooners against UCF. That was a big difference maker. But like you said, Bud, I I did not see a ton from this passing game. I did not see a ton from this Oklahoma offense. Penalties weren't great, and that's on both sides of the ball. But definitely an issue for the Sooners. But I thought that where we knew that Kansas was going to be able to run the ball effectively, I thought that the surprise for me was that Kansas's defense played so well against the Sooners here in this spot. Totally. Sorry, I I thought Tom was going and Tom didn't go, so I'm like, do I go? (laughs) I'm just – I don't – did Kansas's defense play that spectacularly? Like, I mean, they've they've made some plays, but the thing that really stands out to me that's crazy about this game is that – Kansas had three turnovers. It was terrible in the red zone. It had five red zone possessions and only got 19 points out of them. Its offensive success rate was 32%. Oklahoma's was 50. Like they were, they were four of 14 on third down and they won. They beat Oklahoma. Like playing well, look at the pick six. Well. That's what I'm saying. It's like pick look six. at look yeah. at pick six, look at red zone, look at third and fourth down. Like they Oklahoma moved the ball effectively. And you got just enough of what you needed to be able to win this game. Like that, that's what I'm saying is you exceeded expectations in a way that made up the margins in a close game against a top 10 team when you're sitting there, obviously flawed. I'm not looking at Kansas and I'm like, well, you know, Kansas beat Oklahoma. No, you think they're going to win the national title. I think they're, they're going to win the national that. championship. This is, a, this is the most well-rounded team I saw on this Saturday, 100%. <laughs> but yeah, I just I, I think that there are Oklahoma shortcomings for sure, but I, I want to make sure that there were some spots where Kansas exceeded. And to do it, you come out, hair on fire, you get the pick six right at the beginning, and then you have a lightning delay. And to still be able to have juice all the way through a long and exhausting game, I don't know, man. Like Lance Leipold is is a headline coming out of this, right? Just as the way that this win. How, how about this? 18 straight losses to the Sooners Mm -hmm. have not beaten Oklahoma period since 1997. Bob Stoops took over that program. And after that, all they did was beat Kansas. And then here we are with a victory here. Not great for Brent Venables in terms of the, you know, the overall comparison factor. But uh, yeah, I I think there's a lot of credit to go to Lance Leipold, to this coaching staff and to a Kansas team that I still believe is flawed, but at least like put it together in a tough spot against a really good opponent. Next, I mean that that's the other aspect of it too. Like Jason Bean was 15 to 32 through two interceptions in the fourth quarter, and they won. It's it's one of those crazy kind of just you know, 
it, it was an insane game. It was one of those weird games. My favorite part was the weather delay afterwards. Oklahoma came out because what was this? It, I can't remember what the score was at the weather delay, but like Oklahoma quickly came back afterwards and took the lead. And there were like a thousand tweets about how the weather delay killed Kansas's momentum. I mean, I, I, I think it's I kind of thought it, it did a little bit, but yeah, like, everyone had to leave the stadium too. Right. But, you know, you'd had the flyover before the game, you know, you'd come out that place was rocking and rolling. I, I do think it kind of killed their momentum. What did it do to Oklahoma's momentum? Like it stopped everybody's game. It it halted the entire game, not just Kansas's momentum. Okay, I so I just thought it was funny. I I definitely understand what you're saying there, and I don't totally disagree. I do think that like what KU does, I'm not going to say it's gimmicky, but it's very collegey. And so mm-hmm. now that like okay, we're Oklahoma, we've seen what Kansas wants to do to try to attack us th- th- this week. Like you sort of know what we're gonna run since we're Oklahoma, right? What what is Candace gonna have cooked up special? And if you're OU, you get to go back to the locker room, take a look and say, okay, here's what they've given us so far. Here's the looks, here's what they've done. So maybe from that standpoint, I, I think it probably was a benefit to OU to have that reset, but they just they could never really throw the knockout punch, man. Like they, they didn't they, they didn't get stops on defense and they didn't look like all that special athletes. Maybe part of that was the weather. I don't know, but it, like, do they look physically superior? Not, not a ton. And they lost to a kid who threw some just I mean, horrendous interceptions. It, it's not like Bean threw the ball all that well. Like those picks were were bad. That that's it's kind of crazy. You lost that game. Do you get the goalposts out of the pond, or do you just leave them there? I would leave them oh, there. Uh, I feel like nah. that could be like a monument type of thing. Like, you know, it's at the bottom of that little pond, the goalposts from the day we beat Oklahoma. And the little kid's like, wow. Nah, if it's the first time you've beaten Oklahoma since 1997, you go get it out and you get people to sign it. <laughs> you put that thing outside the stadium. Chop it into pieces and sell them for 100 bucks each. <laughs> Two years ago. Yes, that's also a good idea. Fundraise for Lance Leipold's contract extension. Two years ago, the athletic director was on Twitter saying, come to the stadium, it's free. <laughs> In this very game. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I remember that. Yeah, Oklahoma at We're Kansas. keeping it close. Come yeah. to the stadium. Oklahoma at Kansas was the athletic director just saying, anyone in Lawrence, doesn't matter. Come one, come all. Bring your sick, bring your needy. We'll just take you all in. No, this is it's it's remarkable. I I think it's a great win. All right, so let's. What about the Oklahoma side moving forward? But I I hear you say that you just don't think that that special athletically, and that was a big takeaway. Tom, are you concerned about the Sooners? Have you changed your tone, especially as this follows? Like, think about it. Texas win. Oh my gosh, week off. Then UCF scare. Now just straight up upset loss. You know, what, how, how are you recalibrating with Oklahoma? I mean, I don't know if it's a complete recalibration, but obviously there are concerns because, it, it, yeah, the, following the UCF game up with this loss to Kansas. But, I mean, Kansas is a good team. Like, it, at some point we have to accept that the Jayhawks are just good. So, you know, losing to them is not kind of the devastating loss, especially on the road that maybe it would have been a few years ago. But I think that – if you look at the rest of the Big 12, like they come off this loss, they've got Oklahoma State next week in Bedlam. That's going to be another really big game for them. And it's, you know, Oklahoma State's playing pretty well right now. They won again tonight. It's hard to think, based on what we've seen the last two weeks, that this team is going to go undefeated the rest of the season, get to the Big 12 title game, and then beat Texas again or whoever it is that it plays there, whether it's Kansas State or even Oklahoma State or somebody else. So, their playoff hopes and their Big 12 title hopes aren't done, but I'm not super confident in their ability to do anymore either, but I wasn't really ultra confident in their ability to do it before. Yeah, I, I also think even if they had gone undefeated, if if they had had to go up against other undefeateds, like let's say a Florida State and a Washington, they're going to lose head-to-head based on, based on strength of schedule, I think, right? Because they played nobody in the non-conference and they don't get – Kansas State on their schedule either, right? So, I mean, you're getting like TCU, BYU, West Virginia, Oklahoma State down the stretch. You got UCF, Iowa State. Iowa State actually looking pretty okay. You know, you got Cincinnati, like Tulsa, Arc State. So, I really thought Oklahoma was probably going to have to go undefeated 
if it wanted to make the playoff, if that situation was to arise, which is unlikely because we're going to have more undefeated teams lose. It, it's, it's coming. But now, like, do they make the Big 12 title game? Because you got four. You have no more room for error. I mean, at Oklahoma State next week, host West Virginia, at BYU, host TCU. If they play like they played today, they'll lose again. Right. It's still a great coaching job, I think, turnaround wise by Venables. And, And we should recognize that. Like, I'm fairly sold that he's the right guy for this. You know, I don't think Dylan Gabriel's very good. Like, I think he's just college good. I don't think he's like a special difference making type quarterback. You know, and, and I, 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 I disagree. I, I bet you he plays somewhere else next year. I, whatever. I mean, I, I think he's a very good special college quarterback. Yeah. I don't think he's an NFL prospect, but I think that his, I think that as we, I know we're sitting here in the, the COVID years are still cycling through the system. But I think the experience that he has given this Oklahoma team is valuable. And I, I think that you can't just expect that Jackson Arnold was going to beat Texas. You can't just expect that, you know, you're going to be able to get that that same level that Dylan Gabriel is able to give you. So I I, I think that he's really good uh, for uh, he's a very, very good college quarterback for this Oklahoma team and with this offensive coordinator. I tend to lean more towards Chip. I, I said after the Red River rivalry game that if Jackson Arnold plays that game, he's not leading that team on that fourth quarter drive to win the game. I think that's where Gabriel's kind of experience and poise came through. But at the same time, I don't know if I'd consider Dylan Gabriel like an elite QB. I think he's good enough to help you win if you have a good team surrounding him. I don't think he's the kind of difference maker where this is an Oklahoma team that clearly has some flaws. And I don't think Gabriel can by himself overcome those flaws when you see games like today where the defense isn't playing well. The other guys aren't making, you know, a bunch of big plays afterwards. It's he he's good enough to win, but he's not good enough to win on his own. So, I mean, he's good. He's just not. Great. Yeah, that, that's my point. Like you need a special quarterback typically to, typically to go undefeated or a lot of NFL guys around him. I don't think when you watch Oklahoma, you see a lot of NFL guys. And thus, I think you need a special quarterback to really go undefeated, even though their schedule is pretty easy. I, and th- I don't think that he's special. I think he's good, good college quarterback, you know? So um, they can still make it. They can still make the playoff. It's just they have to play at a higher – like they have to find that they have level. To be perfect from here on out. Yeah, basically, yeah. There, there, there can be no more slip-ups. Yeah, and you mentioned uh, – so Anthony's been out a couple weeks now. Was this the first time that you saw it and it seemed to make a big difference? Because Nick Anderson's come up with big catches um, in several games. Drake, Drake Stoops is yeah, you know, exactly. like, <laughs> yeah, yeah. If, if Drake Stoops is your leading target guy, that's a problem. Drake, Drake Stoops wouldn't play at a lot of these schools trying to play for the playoffs. Drake Stoops is a Clemson wide receiver if I've ever seen one. No doubt. Yeah. He's, uh, he's, he's no He's a guy you run a little jerk route to. Yeah. Yeah. A hundred percent. Um. Okay. Anything else here? I, I, I want to take us to Madison before we, uh, before we hit this first break. Believe in Kansas. Rank them. You cowards. Of six and two teams, who what who's got who's got the better who's got the better win if you're a six and two team? We'll get I into don't that. have a list of all the six and two teams on hand right now. Guess who does? This guy. <laughs> 